Okay. I would like to thank everybody for coming tonight. It's another full house. We always appreciate that. We don't see that often. So it's really nice to have all of you here with us tonight. Um, that said, I will now open the Estacada City Council meeting. And if you'll please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, can I have roll call, please? Councillor Hughes? Here. Councillor McElroy? Here. Councillor Prokop? Here. Councillor Strobel? Here. Councillor Council Tenbush? Here. Mayor Drinkwine? Here. Thank you very much for that. We are at the first citizen community group comment, so I'm just going to start in. I have quite a few of them. Um, Gary Albine. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, me. Okay. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the Vista Noel Homeowners Association, and uh, we're here to re make a request to the City Council. We've been trying to go through the process of dissolving our HOA. We've done the petition, and we've run across where the HOA owns some property, and we have to get rid of that property. What we're requesting, uh, the City of Estacada, is if they would be willing to assume a small pathway between Oakview Lane and, um, gosh, what is it? Westview Lane. Westview Lane is just a, a cul-de-sac off ginseng. So it's just a small path that goes between those two streets. On the other part of the other land, it's approximately seven acres. We are negotiating ourselves on that, trying to take care of it. But it'd be very helpful if the city of Estacada could take that small pathway. And the reason we're asking that is, upon Reagan Hill, the whole loop up there of all the houses, just Megan Drive and Oakview Lane are the only two streets in an HOA. Everyone else is not obligated to be on one. And there is up off Overlook Court, it's a cul-de-sac that goes in to another little housing area. There is a pocket park in there that's maintained. And there's also an entrance from the park out to First Street. And then farther down on Oakview, uh, Reagan Loop, there is another walkway that goes from Reagan Loop into another cul-de-sac that's maintained by the city. And we were just would like to ask the city of Estacada to consider taking that off our hands so we can get rid of our HOA. That's basically what it comes down to. We're not asking for more than anyone else, but we don't want to be treated any less. It would be, be a very big help. On our petition, we have 62 homeowners. 54 have signed to dissolve. Zero have signed against. We have three undecided. And we have five that we just have not been able to get in touch. They've been out of town or whatever. So it's pretty overwhelming that no one in our neighborhood wants the HOA. So we would ask you to consider our request. We'd appreciate it. And we'll be looking forward to hearing from you. All right. We thank you for bringing that to us tonight. And staff will review that and we'll have a conversation about that and get back to you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Thomas McKinney, is that right? McEnany. McEnany. See, you think I'd get it the second time around, wouldn't you? <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, that's fine. Tom McEnany, 
Uh, this is me climbing on my soapbox tonight. Um, first of all, yes, 9-11. Definitely nobody should ever, ever forget that, no. ever. And we need to keep it in the forefront so that nobody, even the young ones coming up, ever forget it. So anyway, to give validity to what I'm saying tonight, I've been a resident of the area, not of the city, but of the area for more than 40 years, which is more than some of you have been alive. Um, been a 4-H leader, Cub Scout leader, business owner. So when I come to you and say that I have to advocate for certain people for the open city council seat, I think that I bring a lot of experience. I've seen good and bad happen to this town. Uh, more good than bad, but there's been some bad. So with all that said, there are people that you find that come across in your life that you make an instant connection with, and you find that they have the kind of thought process that 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 is genuine and can only do good for your city. This person is already an advocate for the city. She's an ambassador for the city. So you cannot go wrong with Sarah Welton as the person to fill that seat. She is generous with her time. So you couldn't possibly make a wrong decision with that person filling that seat. Thank you. Okay. Well, Shane Harris. Yeah. Well, you're walking a lot better there, buddy. Yeah, man. Crutches <laughs> finally. <laughs> Still a lot of pain, though. Hi, my name is Shane Harris. I am a registered voter here in the city of Essicatus. I'm also a disabled combat veteran, so I have something to say. Since I've been off of work, I've done some investigating on every council member and city staff here. Some of the things I have found out are absolutely appalling. And I'm putting you on notice. I will be digging and I will be doing more investigating than some of you. Some of the things I've found is the infighting here between city staff and city council. Get this straight. Hierarchy is the voters, the council, and then the city staff. And the city staff needs to stop button heads with you. You run their show. You're paid employees. Sorry, I'm angry. You had an individual that makes over six figure income on the city staff. You have another individual that's on two separate committees and they're not supposed to be, make them choose now. The other thing is, is I'm getting off track. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, is I've looked in some of the, it's right there on your webpage, some of your boards and uh, boards and committees. And what the heck is the DEIC? -E we all know what it stands for. Call it what it is. It's a wokeness committee. It says right there on the web page for off the city web page, a committee to equality, social, and environmental justice. Who determines what that is? I could define it differently than some other people here. And I know from what I understand, that committee is directed by the state, but you don't have to follow state. The state doesn't follow federal laws. Counties don't follow state laws. Cities don't follow any laws. Look at Portland. You have the right, you got Eastern Oregon that passed laws and things out there to make it a second amendment free zone. And they've told the state of Oregon to shove it. You can do that too. And some of these staff members need to go. Because some of you, if you wanna be in charge, run for the council. Oh, that's right. Some of you don't even live in this city. Some of you, live out in like Lake Oswego, and we know who that individual is. Thank you. Hey, Wally Conza. Good evening. Thank you, John, for giving me the opportunity to have a few words tonight. Uh, my main reason for being here uh, is to support an individual that who I believe is probably the most qualified individual that we have here in the city. 
and that's our Mrs. Estacada. I can't uh, express my thoughts. Tom over here, well, I tell you, he was spot on. So I'm not going to repeat any of the positive issues that, you know, he brought up and what a fine individual, uh, somebody that cares about our city, somebody that cares about our kids, uh, cares about our school district. I don't think we could have a better candidate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have Connie Redmond. This is going to be a little bit different tone than the previous speakers. Mm -hmm. Connie Redmond, Estacada Chamber of Commerce. I want to give you a quick update of the chamber activities in the past few months. Um, the summer season has been full of business networking events, ribbon cuttings. We did All American Rental, Mama's Dahlia's, Wednesday's Wine Bar, uh, Wade Creek Park, Northwest Butcher Supply, Rosar's Coach Works, and I apologize if I said that wrong. Uh, we also want to remind people that Dr. Orth is coming back to town, and he's having a ribbon cutting on Thursday at 3 o'clock. He'll be at the Pregnancy Resource Center, so it will be great to have him back. Uh, Nancy continues to respond to visitor requests for information. Uh, she's handed out and mailed out over 2,300 field guides, 23, 23 field guides this last few months. Christina has continued to work with our tourism partners, such as Travel Oregon and Mount Hood Territory. Estacada was represented at, represented at the recent Clack Missouri Cleanup, which is a countywide volunteer annual event. Uh, Visit Estacada teamed up with Oregon Parks to launch the nationwide Kids and Parks Adventure Program at Metzler Park. Um, Christina and Nancy continue to send out information via e news and Facebook. The chamber is packing up and will be going remote as, remote as of the 1st of October. Uh, Christina and Nancy have been busy packing, sorting, tossing out, um, and we're ready for the next chapter in the Chamber's history. But I do want to thank the city for the many, many years of partnership we've had with them. Uh, being center in Estacada has been a great asset to the city, uh, to the visitors, and to the Chamber. So thank you. Um, thank you, staff, for doing a wonderful job. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next I have Tim May. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members. Um, not real good at this. I wrote it down. I wrote this a few weeks ago before I knew what exactly the agenda of today was. So things sound a little odd in it. They weren't meant to. Um, I originally spoke up in opposition to the formation of the DEIC because I feel that Estacada is quite diverse, <clears throat> inclusive, and through hard work, equitable. <clears throat> and this is clearly evident if you witness our business sector. Estacada, let's see. Uh, more than two years has passed uh, without any notable recommendations from the DEIC. Perhaps we should reevaluate whether we need such a committee or at very least restructure the one that we currently have. The respect <clears throat> that reflects the social, cultural, and economic diversity of Estacada. I mean, no disrespect to the committee members or the as they are appointees and I'm sure well-intended, nor do I desire to undermine the council's commitment to addressing perceived social inequities. I would, however, take this opportunity to caution the council against taking actions that may be viewed by others as merely pandering, nor engaging in activities that may be construed as systemic racism. <coughs> Estacator accurately reflects the ethnic and social construct it is uniquely American. That is to say, we are a group of ethnically, socially, and economically diverse individuals living in relative harmony. <clears throat> in fact, if I were to point, the place where we lack that would be in this building. Um, we have a chance to rectify that situation, however. 
we have an open council seat. You all have the opportunity to reach out to the community and elect and appoint somebody far more diverse than ourselves in that seat. Appreciate your time, and I hope you take that to heart. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's all the comments I have. Unless somebody has some more, do you have any more, Melanie, that were handed in during that? No, not anymore. All right. I will move on uh, with the meeting. But we thank you for all your comments. We definitely will review and discuss, and we will get back to you on those. Uh, we are now at the consent agenda. You've all had an opportunity to read the consent agenda. Do I have a motion on the floor? I move to approve the consent agenda. Okay. I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? A second. First and second, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Consent agenda is passed. Okay. We are at department and committee reports. Um, do any of you have reports from your groups that you'd like to discuss tonight? I'll let you go first, Paul. Just, just real quick, met with the library committee um, a couple weeks ago. They continue to grow. They continue to do. They continue to do very well. People are returning more and more to the library. Hours have expanded. They've hired somebody. It sounds like a great hire for their uh, uh, mobile, well, bookmobile job as well too. So we're looking forward to seeing that in the community. And if you haven't signed up for their. Um, their newsletter. I encourage you to do so. Lots of great information comes out on a monthly basis there. So like that. Thank you. How is the pavilion doing on the outside? Are they doing well on the rentals on that? The city handles the rentals on that now, but it sounds like things are going really well. With yeah. That. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Jerry. Um, the, uh, the arts commission met, um, just went over basic, basic stuff. Um, they have, a. Uh, no estacated creates this month but next month there's two events right okay so yeah two events next month um for the arts commission uh estacated creates on october 12th um i don't know what it means but nano rit nano ritmo prep class but um it's, it's i'm i'm learning <laughs> um what is it? i'm curious it's it's a um it's just like a it's a writing, it's like a small private writing. Like if you want to write a book or a novel or something like that, it's it's a group that's across the US, probably international. And it just kind of helps support like young and new yeah. writers. So yes. anyway. thank you yeah. for explaining that. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have got lost there. Um, and then I would like to invite everybody out on uh, September 23rd, the Downtown Estacada Commission is uh, hosting Oktoberfest in downtown Estacada. It's going to be pretty amazing. A lot of fun. Um, I think it's from two to 10. No. 11. Oh, 11 to seven. Okay. Yeah. I knew it was a little later than seven, but um, yeah, thank you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a pretty big event, pretty amazing um, kind of taking place of the, uh, the wine event that and harvest festival. Yeah. So come on out on the 23rd. Come join us. Right. Uh, the DEI committee has put out a survey online. It'll be in the water bill. It is um, initially just to promote in the committees that are here to let you know that you can get involved. And so I'm glad a lot of you are here. Maybe some of you came because of that. I don't know. But um, survey's open. It should be open, I think, for the next month. Okay, thank you, Jerry. I have nothing this time. Mike. The Traffic and Public Safety Committee met, and um, I have a lot of notes, so I'll try to capture it as quick as possible. Jim, don't hate me if I miss something. So Chief Mendoza came and gave an update. There was a change in staffing for the SRO that took a position elsewhere. Deputy Kyler joined and went through the training for that. This was before school had started, and he was going to be in place for the first day of school. Um, Deputy Norman had accepted a position in Sandy and the chief is seeking out a replacement for that position by moving an existing officer from within the department and assigning them to the city of Escada. East County deputies will be responding to those calls during the missing deputy shifts until he's replaced. Um, he's been, the department's been working with the superintendent for schools about mass casualty kits um, to have on site uh, for emergency preparedness. 
One will be placed at each school and the district office. They're going to be offering medical response training to the employees of the school to help them be better prepared for an emergency response. Uh, the chief also mentioned that he was glad to be able to participate in the National Night Out event in Estacada. Elena uh, uh, reviewed, Elena Turpin with the city reviewed the hazard mitigation plan update. Um, they found that we were vulnerable to an earthquake and earthquake in the Cascadia subduction zone. Um, they had some different rankings on there. The top tier vulnerabilities were wildfire, earthquake, crustal, and Cascadia zone. The middle tier were winter storms, extreme heat, and drought. There were uh, a couple members that were interviewed for the Traffic and Public Safety Committee openings, including Christina Adams and Abraham Smith. Uh, and then they recapped, just went over the National Night Out event. Carrie was very impressed and appreciative of the sheriff's presence at the event, including the apparatuses that were brought um, for the community to check out. All the members enjoyed the night, received consistent feedback from the community when it came to the broader question of getting uh, the homeless the help they need. When asked specific questions about that, how that happens is when people kind of got lost in the weeds. Um, and then the audible signal signal request for Broadway and Highway 224 came up and Elena let us know she is waiting on a response from the engineer and Taylor will report that update once she has more information. There was a lot more information covered there, but I tried to get that down, whittle it down there, Jim. So that's Good what I job. got. Yeah. All right. Any other things to be talked about? No. All right. We are now at the city manager's report. All right. Thank you. Just have a few things to share. Um, first of all, involving the League of Oregon Cities, the conference is coming up in October. And I know it's hard to get that time off to go to the whole conference, but I did want to highlight the counselor's workshop and the mayor's workshop that's happening on Thursday morning. It's in Eugene. So I'm going to be just driving down for that morning. Um, and the mayor and managers group is combining and that the, the um, counselors also have a, a workshop at that time. And so I just put a handout on your um, desk there so that you can review that in case anybody might be able to get one day off. I know um, for some of you, that's easier than others. And then um, we are also hosting a League of Oregon Cities legislative update here on this coming Wednesday. What's today, Monday? It's not this coming, it's next Wednesday. It's on the 21st, um, the 20th. It's on the 20th, sorry about that, next Wednesday. Um, and we're gonna have it up at the Wade Creek Community Room to highlight our new room up there. And um, you're invited if you can, again, get, get away from work for a little bit to come up um, let us know and we can uh, get you more information. The Wade Creek Restoration Project um, is going to be getting an award from the Department of State Lands, and I have just got notified of that, so we'll have more information later. Um, there's multiple uh, aspects of that park up there. There's actually the park, there's the community room, and the amphitheater and stage, and then there's the, the restoration of the creek and um, how that was put back from a man-made pond back to the creek like it originally was. And that is the restoration portion is what we're getting an award for. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to let you know that we put out an RFP for our pilot project for tourism. Uh, we got three letters of interest when we put out a call for letters of interest and they all looked good, very well qualified. So we um, sent them a request for proposals and we will update you on that in a month or so, okay. that is all. Thank you very much for that. Okay, moving ahead, we are at council business, the city councilor appointment. And Melanie, I will let you take it away with the oh. councilors actually coming to the podium, if that's okay. I mean, you're gonna call them up to talk about them. Um, sure, you know, I forgot to print out the, um, the questions that we were gonna have them talk about, but it's pretty basic. So I thought um, after speaking with the counselors and the mayor, that it would be nice, even though there's quite a bit of information in the application that everyone submitted, um, if we uh, had each person come up and it will give you three minutes to introduce yourself and talk about why you were interested in applying for the uh, position, what, drives you to um, 
you know, to want to do that and serve in that way. And that way we'll get a little more interaction. And then after that, you can speak less than three minutes, but up to three minutes. And then we'll have the council be able to ask you clarifying questions about um, your introductory statement or things on your application that they need a clarification on. And so- Right. Um, Do we have a list to call the first one up? Or? Um, I could just go down the list according to what's in the packet. Perfect. So the first person is Jonathan Metcalf. And we will, thank you, Jonathan. We'll have you come up to the podium. I okay to call. Getting you set up. All right, we're ready to go. First off, thank you for your time and your consideration for the position. I do genuinely appreciate it. I'm going to start by touching on some of the stuff that was talked by, or that was talked about here by a couple of people. Like a lot of your, like a lot of the citizens here, I don't care about the diversity, equity, inclusion. I don't want you to consider my color for this. That has nothing to do with why I'm here. I'm here because this is the first place in my entire life that I've ever got to feel like home. As a kid, it was pretty shaky. I grew up in Halsey, Oregon. Okay, my parents, they weren't abusive. They were nothing like that. I was just the only person that looked like me and it was a rough go. Not because I was a victim or anything of that nature. It was just rough. I never knew what it was like to be involved. My parents weren't involved with anything. I didn't see any leadership that was like that. So because of that, I ran a little bit of a rougher edge, right? Not in the sense of getting in all sorts of legal trouble or anything like that, but I spent a lot of time spinning my wheels. That being said, upon graduating, I joined the Marine Corps, at which right before I was supposed to go to boot camp, my mother passed away. And that was the first time in my life that I've been challenged on, excuse me, <clears throat> the, my character. I raised my hand four weeks before my mom died and said, no matter what, I, Jonathan Metcalf, do solemnly swear. My oath is not dead just because my service is. I've been out of the Marine Corps for 13 years now. Like you, sir, I'm also a combat veteran. I served two tours in Afghanistan. I was wounded in 2011 overseas. I did not receive a Purple Heart because... We can, you can ask me about that later. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I don't want that to be my consideration either. Why I'm here is because I work in construction. I'm a blue collar hand, just like a lot of you people here in this room. I'm here because I wanna serve you. And I want these younger kids and that younger generation to see what it's like for somebody to step into that position to include my own children. I'm here because I wanna make a difference and because I care about this community. And this is the only way I know how to give back. As most of you know, in the career field that we work in, all you hear is complain, complain, complain. It's always problem oriented. Nobody comes to the table with a solution. Rather than complain about how nobody else my age is doing it, I'm here. And now there's many other people here that are just as qualified, if not more, and I understand that. And I wish you all the best of luck. I'm not here to compete with you in the sense that I think I'm better than you. I'm here to do a job. And that job is for this community. And that job is to bring something new to the table. I've been here for six years. I'm not from here, but this is home. This is home for my kids. They were all born and raised here. And this is gonna be home for us for a very long time. With that, I would like to, again, thank you for your time. And I'd like to wish the rest of you the best of luck, no matter who you choose. I just, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Do, any questions, any questions for Jonathan? Or? I've got one, Jonathan. You're you're applying for city council. We have you say you want to get involved. Appreciate that, and thank you for for stepping up and and uh, uh, addressing us as well tonight. Too great job on that. We've got openings on committees as well too. Why council over committees? If you're looking to get involved, that's a great question, Mr. Strobel. Thank you. To be honest with you, because the way to attack is from the top, not the bottom. I'm not looking to jump in and swim in the water. I'm looking to like dip my toe in it and get wet and see what it's all about. I'm looking to come to the community and sold for, serve for full force, excuse me. And I'm also looking to bring a younger perspective to the table. That's why. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other questions? We thank you, Alexander. We thank you.
Okay. Our next applicant um, in the packet is Cassandra Warren. And I had heard that she had chosen to withdraw. I don't know if she's here tonight. She never notified us directly that she was withdrawing, but I'm assuming she's not here mm -hmm. um, since she did make a statement about that. So thirdly, we have Vincent Balomo. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Vince Palomo. I've been uh, part of the community for a few years now. Uh, the reason I'm, I applied for the position is it seemed like a natural next step after serving on multiple city committees. I've been on, I've been the chair of the Parks and Rec Committee for a little bit, and I've been on the Budget Committee for a few years. Those committees have given me a lot of opportunity to learn about the city, learn how local government works, and has given me the ability to give back to the community, which I love being a part of. Uh, the things I hope to accomplish during a term would be, uh, one would be creating and promoting uh, existing channels of communi communication between city council and the public. Uh, two would be helping make decisions on major projects like necess 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 necessary ones, like the water treatment plant or the Lakeshore project and uh, help make decisions on uh, projects advocated by uh, citizens like the splash pad or traffic safety concerns. Uh, what drives me to be on city council would be, uh, I have the time and capacity to be on city council to help in any way, shape or form. Uh, and I just understand the importance of citizens and members of a community doing everything they can to make the community the best possible version of itself it can be. And whether that's helping set up for events helping write grants to get more funding for the city or doing anything to help the city just do it the best it can. Uh, yeah, that would be an honor to serve the public in that way. All right, thank you for that. Any questions? I can hit either side of the tip first, go ahead. Um, sure. When did, it's not about your application, but when does your term end on Parks and Rec? Uh, both budget and parks and rec would end December of 24, I think. So I would have to resign both of those positions if I were to be on the city council. Okay. That's all I had. Okay. Over here. Oh, Paul. Good. Sure. Good. Hey. Okay. Thank you, sir. We appreciate thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you, Vincent. Okay. Next, we have Tiffany Calder. Good evening. Um, I'm Tiffany Calder. I've lived here in Estacada for five years now, and um, I am interested in serving on city council because I've watched a lot of the communication um, between uh, community and city council, and I'd like to help make a difference in some of the smoothness in that. Um, I feel like one piece that Estacada does um, well is coming together when it really matters, as we've seen in the last few years uh, with the fire and the um, the winter storm and, and neighbors checking on each other. One thing I've watched not go so well sometimes is people communicating um, around, around other things that maybe aren't, uh, the life or death type of things. And, um, and I think that I, I have a passion for looking at both sides of, of everything on a table, whether it's a, a thing to be solved or just a, a question that comes up. And, um, that's just something that I feel like I could bring to the city council table um, is an ability to look at both sides of of the coin and not necessarily have it be what am I wanting, but what are what are the people of Estacada saying? This is what we are needing, and what would benefit the city the the best for for our commerce, for our growth, for our children, for um, for our future. And so that's just something that I feel is very important for the city council. Thank you for that. Um, any questions for? 
You may have answered this in your in your uh, statement, Tiffany, but you said you'd like to come to the council to make a difference in communication, and I guess maybe elaborate a little bit more. How, what would you be looking to bring? Um, I one one thing that, and maybe I have completely missed while living here in Estacada, but I haven't seen a lot of opportunity. Uh, you know, there've been the barbecues on the lawn, but um, a lot of opportunities for council members to interface directly with um, community members that they don't already know. So a lot of times when I've listened um, on Zoom or come to meetings, I've heard when council members talk about well, the people that I'm talking to, the people that I know, and I guess what I would love to see and, and figure out how to help happen is it go beyond that, beyond the people you already know and, and opportunities for community members because you don't get to talk right here in this this kind of environment. As a council, you're not getting to talk to the people that are sitting here and Facebook is not the right environment for that that kind of thing either. So I, you know, town halls and those kinds of things um, as, as votes and those kinds of things start coming up, that kind of communication that just kind of going both ways. So that the people you know and the people you're representing are outside your normal sphere of, of people that you see on a, a daily basis. Thank you. Thank you. Can I, can I ask one yeah. question uh, yeah. also, um, so, so that we ask everybody kind of the same questions and would that be all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so Tiffany, you mentioned in your, um, in your application that you were an interim member of the DEI for a while, um, just filling the gap that somebody needed. Would you also, is that how you would phrase that, be interested if you are um, not the successful candidate today or applicant today, would you continue to seek other um, committees or commissions to get involved with or is this? Yeah, yes, I. Um, one reason I didn't seek, uh, I don't know the right word, re-app, re, re reapplying for that was we had some situations in our family that have uh, since resolved um, uh, with a, a foster child that we had and no longer are applicable. And so the the time and the bandwidth within my life is definitely freed up to be able to do that. So sure. thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. All right. Next, we have Sarah Welton. Hello, uh, my name is Sarah Welton. I'm a dedicated community member who has spent the last few years actively engaged in various community projects and committees. I have a passion for this community. My goal each day is to do what I can to make a positive impact in the place where I call home. I have lived here for almost six years now, and this is truly where I can say my life is. From my involvement with the school district, talking with teachers, superintendent, and coaching our children at sports and cheering them on at school functions, to uh, attending our local fire department's monthly board meetings, library events, our community centers events, attending the city council events. Um, I have totally immersed myself in this community because this is where I call home and this is my life. And I can tell you that Estacada is special now I am looking forward to making my involvement to the next level by running for city council position. I can say with certainty that I have a deep understanding of the issues that are facing our community. I know what's going on in the city. I know what people are talking about and how they feel. And I know that these decisions that we make here in, in this room affect real people. This is why I believe that I have poised myself into a strong advocate for our city and the residents if elected as city council position. Right. Thank you. Thank you, any questions? Oh, yeah. yeah, I'll keep I'll keep the same question going for us here. Um, city council versus commissions and committees. We've got several open right now. Why I'm running for Miss Oregon as Miss Estacada. So I choose city council or Miss Oregon. Okay, so this is, okay, thank you. 
or mayor. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Like I said, you're a lot prettier than me. You got a chance there. <laughs> uh, anybody questions on this side? No? no. No. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. And our final applicant is Scott Stout. Is it Ron? Ron or Scott? Ron, Scott. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Hi. Um, I stand before you today with a genuine passion to serve our community. Um, I have a diverse background from managing a security and fire alarm company to uh, managing a lumber yard. Um, and this has provided me with a unique lens with which I approach challenges and solutions. So in these roles, I've managed to teams shape policy and prioritize what's best for the collective good. Um, I understand the importance of collaborative governance, and I want to deepen um, my understanding of group dynamics and decision making at a higher level of community leadership. Um, what I bring to the table is a fresh, unbiased perspective um, forged from varied experiences. I believe this, with uh, combined with my eagerness to learn and collaborate, uh, would make me a strong candidate for city council committed to the welfare and progress of our community. And I humbly ask for the opportunity to serve and shape a brighter future for Estacado. Thank you. Any questions for Scott? I guess yes, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep the question going here uh, with the commission openings and committee openings that we have. Why city council versus some other committees or commissions? Um, actually, I've Jerry's hit me up on other committees, and I've done my best to try to fill those slots as well. This is an opening, um, and I'm I'm here to offer my services to this community. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. All right. First off, I think we thank all the applicants. Yes. You all did a great job for being on the spot and having to come up with it right then and there. Um, that said. Yes, you have some excellent applicants. And so I will, I'll turn it back over to you, Mayor, to lead the discussion. Um, and maybe there's some organic discussion that just wants to happen, or maybe you want to go around the tables and um, ask, you know, point out a couple of the bright spots and some of the applicants that rise to the top for each person, or I'll, but I'll let you go ahead. Right. And Thank you for that. that. Um, you've heard all the applicants. You were all there once. <laughs> um, I was there once. It's a hard role that we do right here in this building. You know that. Some days it's good, some days it's bad. We take it home with us. It's it's harder than people know. You never stop thinking about it. And I think you all know that now. You've had a taste of it. I feel comfortable that you're well-versed in everything that we've done. So uh, giving you advice, I mean, in this room and applying for this position, it's a council seat, you're right. You're serving the people, but you're doing more than that. You're coming into their homes. You're coming into their lives. You're coming into their events. You're coming into everything. If you do this job the way you're supposed to, you become a everyday item in their lives. And everything that happens in this city, you're a part of, good or bad. Sometimes you do it right. Sometimes you do it wrong. But you do it because you love this community. And that's what we're asking for tonight out of each and every one of you. So if you're willing to do that, I'm game. So that said, we're going to pass it off to anybody who wants to speak on this, just general questions or uh, character things or whatever you want to talk about. So do I have any on the table now that can start? Jerry, let's start with you. Yeah, um, I really like uh, one applicant. He's he's put in the, put in the time in the commissions and committees, um, you know, really put in the time and the effort. And uh, I think he... He did it the right, you know, I'm not saying that there's a right or wrong way, but he did it the way that we've asked people to do join the commissions and committees, you know, get, get, you know, get in, get a feel for it. And then, you know, when you're ready to move up. So um, I, I really like Vincent Belomo for the spot. Okay. Any other statements? Um, yeah. 
Um, I, I agree about Vincent. I do have a top three and it's been really hard because everybody's so great. Um, I, I think that there is a learning curve when you come into this. I've been in it for nine months. I'm still learning. It's hard. And I think if you're on a commission, especially if you are a chair, it may be an easier transition, um, though a lot of people do have experience with boards. Um, and I do like what Tiffany said about direct community engagement that really speaks to me. And I would love to start doing events like that. So um, yeah, so I'm interested in Tiffany and Vincent. Okay. Any other comments? Paul, go ahead. Um, I lean in the same way as as uh, what Jerry was saying. I appreciate the uh, from from uh, Vincent's standpoint that he's got some experience on boards, not just experience but leadership as well too within the committee uh, too. So that would be where I would be leaning at the present. I see that as an important piece to bring to the council. I appreciate all all the people that came out for the position. There's um, one person in particular that that I was encouraged about seeing here tonight, and I have had opportunity to meet with, uh, spend some time with Jonathan Metcalf outside of this chamber. He he coached beside me on the football team, and I had a chance to see him interacting with the kids and his leadership role there, and just um, his character when he dealt with troubled you know, difficult situations with kids and in, in that environment and and helping them navigate through some tough things. And I just saw the type of person he is. I appreciate his service to our country and the fact that um, after serving the country, he's looking for an opportunity to serve in the community. Um, and I think he'd be a great addition to the council. And I I hope he makes it. Okay. Sure. Um, <clears throat> this is always very hard. And I sometimes think it's easier to run then be appointed <laughs> and you have a bit more of a learning curve when you actually run do you kind of have some buffer time to um hit the hit the ground running um i have one candidate in mind it is mr medcalf i think he really represents Estacada very well and i will say um he although he appears rough around the edges i think he would be a great addition to um our council and um i think that he has the willing the time commitment allowed um this is one thing i look at do you have the time for this um tonight i'm missing my son's football game in scapoos <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. So, I mean, those are, there are some sacrifices that need to be made when you want to step into this. And so, um, you know, I don't know everybody deeply and personally that have applied for this position, but it does take a lot of time commitment, um, not only to this council, but also to the, um, the, the commissions and the committees in which you liaison for as well as, you know, just answering emails, Friday phone calls with Melanie, um, so, and, and just prep time for the meeting. So it is a big time commitment. So that's something I look at. Um, I just, yeah, so that's my, that's what I got to say about that for right now. If we need to discuss more, we, we can, but okay. Mr. Metcalf's my first choice. All right, any more discussion on the applicants? No. No. How do you want to proceed? Did you want to say something about? Oh no, no. Okay. Anxious, anxious to hear your thoughts as well. Mr. Oh, you Mayor. want to hear my thoughts? Mm -hmm. Um, I like. I thought everybody did a great job coming into the room. Uh, I thought everybody was heartfelt. You all put it across very, very well. Um, I think this role requires. Uh, strong constitution what we do like i said is not easy and uh you take it home with you sometimes you feel it a lot of times it's not good so i have two in mind that i i thought were strong uh strong presence they showed um character i see them around town uh 
and I just felt comfortable with how they presented themselves. Um, I think I'll hold on to it until we go to the vote instead of telling you outright. I mean, I could. What do you think? Should I hold it for the vote? I'm thinking you you can do whatever you want to do, however you all feel most comfortable with it. But I'm thinking if you if you could share like your top two, see if there's consensus on any. You know, maybe maybe somebody's first choice is multiple people's second choice, and you think, okay, yeah, I could go with that. Um, so I I don't know unless somebody just wants to make a motion, you could just make a motion. But I kind of feel like if you can come to a consensus about who the who your top two candidates were, and then maybe whittle that down to um, a top candidate or applicant, I should say. Um, okay. But, All right. Well, that said that I, Sarah was one and Metcalf was the other. Okay. That was the same two for me as well. Okay. So does somebody want to make a motion? I move to appoint Vincent Belomo to the city council with the term ending December 31st, 2024. All right. Second. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. You want to do a roll call instead? Or just maybe raise your hand. Okay, raise, raise your hand. hand. Okay. Okay. So all opposed would be all opposed. Three. Okay. So that motion fails. Do we have another I'd like to motion? make a motion to appoint Jonathan Metcalf to the empty city council position. I'll okay. second. I'm game. That's okay. three. That's three. Oh, all I'll right. put it out for a motion. There you go. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Motion passes then. Okay. All right. All John. right. We have a new counselor. So. Yep. <laughs> Sir, if you'll uh, step up to, to the podium up here, we'll uh, get you sworn in. And I'll move out of the way here and let. Uh... Oh, you want to go right there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, right. Peter, Peter, you want to do it in front of the sign? I'll, I'll take a picture and send it oh, to the paper. Thank you, Jerry. That would. Council Chambers, that would be fantastic. I'm Jonathan Metcalf. Yeah. I'm Jonathan Metcalf. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution and laws of the United States and the state of Oregon. That I will support the Constitution and laws of the United States and the state of Oregon. And the charter and ordinances of the city of Estacada. The charter and ordinances of the city of Estacada. And will well and truly perform the duties. And will well and truly perform the duties of the office of the city councilor to the best of my ability. Of the office of the city to the city councilor to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Welcome to the council. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I I sent the picture to you. So if you want to forward it to the newspaper. Perfect. Thank you. All right. We are at the next citizen and community group comment. I have none in front of me unless there's some that have not been handed out yet or handed in. I'm sorry about that. I do um, not have any other. Is there anybody online who has their hand raised? And then. No. We have one. one quick comment. Quick comment. Yeah. We do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was meant to send email earlier, but uh, Wade Creek Park, uh, the gazebo, the new community building, if you're walking towards it, the, the pathway, the largest pieces of concrete didn't get any stress lines when they were installed. So they have big cracks going straight down the middle. You may want to contact the, the builders who put that in and just see if they can potentially repair it uh, going forward before we uh, lose the ability for them to do that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. I appreciate that. I think we had that conversation about a few pads there uh, already. So yeah. that's good. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right. That done, we will move into executive session. Um, I will read 
do we want to do do we want to do the mayor and council reports yeah do you want to do, that? That? I, I, do that i put that first because i thought people might not stay all i get confused when we throw time. around the I executive know. session um all right i'll start off with you jerry okay uh first off i want to thank everybody for coming and thank you all the applicants um i really appreciate you know we really appreciate you know getting involved and for those of you that aren't on committees or commissions now, um, we strongly recommend if you if you want to get involved in the city, please look into the commissions and committees uh, availabilities that are open. Um, we definitely love to have more input and involvement. Um, uh, welcome aboard, Jonathan. Um, my no vote was no reflection on you or my you know opinion of you. Um, but welcome aboard. I think, uh, you know, after reading your application, you're, uh, I think you'll do good things here. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't take it personally. I'm just here to work just like you. Man. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, thank you everybody for coming. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate everybody who applied. Um, it was very, very hard to decide. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out is I got a, little door hanger today from the schools and they have committees that they need help with. So if you're interested in that, you should uh, join and also the city ones, of course. Um, and then as uh, Jerry said, um, Oktoberfest is next Saturday. So I hope everybody comes and uh, welcome Jonathan. Yeah, Jerry. Yeah, so again, I want to echo what uh, Councillor Ten Bush said to all the applicants. I think, um, you know, it it takes a lot of guts and courage to just put yourself out there and apply. It's 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 hard. You put yourself in a very vulnerable position, and I really appreciate that. And this decision is is never easy. Um, it's down to two for me, and um, it sucks. It sucks making that choice. I like I said, it's easier to just get, have it put out to vote and let the public decide, but you know, uh, six of us sit up here and make that choice and it's, it's never fun. But with that said, um, I'd like to welcome you aboard, Mr. Metcalf, and I think you're going to do great things here. Um, and uh, I also want to encourage people to go to the Oktoberfest. I know I'm super excited about it. I lived in Germany for a while, so I am very like, I'm I'm for it. I'm ready for it. So I encourage people to support that and support that community event. And I hope it continues. And uh, yeah, that's all I got to say. Very great. Thank you. Mike. Thank you everyone for coming out. It's been quite the contrast from when I first started on the council. You used to be able to hear a pin drop in here. And now the room's been packed out um, the last several meetings we've had. And I really appreciate that. It's good to hear feedback from the community rather than trying to guess what people want. It's great when people come up and share their thoughts on different subjects. Um, gives us a better opportunity to represent what your wishes are. We appreciate that. Congratulations, Jonathan, for your new position. And thank you to everybody for coming. Thank you. Paul? Well, I just, just want to echo the same thing. I remember being in, in the shoes of those that applied it was like three years ago. And I thought, this is how we do it. And it's, it's such a challenge. And I didn't get on and Paul got in. <laughs> but thank you all. Thank you all for applying. We uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, you. You all did a great job. It was very difficult to decide going through the applications ahead of time. And, and you all did a great job presenting too. So thanks for that. And also thanks for those that spoke ahead of time. Um, it is important for us to be hearing from everyone uh, via uh, coming in here speaking or emailing us directly. Um, it is appreciated. Thank you. Alexander, your first one. Say whatever you feel, my friend. Uh, I hope none of you feel like you lost. I'm going to stand up and I don't like the microphone thing. <laughs> I work in the trenches with a lot of you, like a lot of you guys probably do yourself. So thank you for the appointment. Uh, I do genuinely appreciate it. Uh, also, thank you for the rough around the edges comment. I come off a little abrasive. I don't mean to. I'm a very charismatic and passionate person. So I appreciate that you can see that. And to the rest of you, like I'm here to serve you. That's the only reason I'm up here is to work for this community and to continue my commitment. Like I said, when in my speech, I start from the top down. I don't attack something haphazardly. I'm not here to get my pinky toe wet and see what the temperature of the water is. I'm here to dive in and get to work. And I heard some concerning things tonight from you guys before I had an opportunity to speak that I personally would like to address and attack too. Although I do see why committees are 
put together and stuff like that. And not everybody's going to agree with maybe how that goes or what the state recommends. I do think that I'm able to bring a fresh perspective that doesn't care about that, that does care about what you want. So that's what I'm here for. And I want to thank you for this opportunity to serve you. Sincerely, thank you. Well, you know, I used to think I had the big conversation on the table. I guess I lost that. Uh, this guy's got it going on. I think he scared me out of my vote personally. He's huge. <laughs> but uh, that said, uh, I, you all did a great job. All of you were speaking the truth tonight about what this community is and what you want it to be. I get that. You know, I hope that all everybody in this room will run in the general election because if we could fill the table with people like you, it's going to win. We're always going to win. But it takes people to come out. And unfortunately, not everybody always comes out during election time. Why, I don't know. I mean, I was elected the first time because my last name was Drinkwine. Not about what I did, what I proved, where I came from. They voted on my last name. That's the only reason I got in here. Now, since then, they've had a lot of glasses of wine because of me. But I hope to think I did good things. I'd hope. Thanks. Thanks. I'm still here. I, <laughs> Sarah's going to take me out. I know she is, but I thought I'd just put that in there. I'm still here, but I'm still here for you. And I will always be here for you. Like I said, nothing's going to change that. And I'll try to be fair always. And sometimes you probably won't think I am, but you have to understand where I look at it from. I've been a lot of places. I've done a lot of things and I've made us to get in my home for 25 years now. And I wouldn't have it any other way. It took a long time to find this place. And I want what everybody else wants. I want a place I know it's safe. And that all of you know that you can raise your families and your kids. And you know that they get a good education. And you know that your police services take care of you. And you know that we are always going to be that safe city. That's all I ask at the end of this. And I hope that every one of you, like I said, will file to run for council so you can experience the same thing and do the same thing. That said, I'm done on the soapbox here, guys. And now we got to go into that wonderful executive session. So I'm going to read the little form for you as you depart. designated by the governing body to negotiate real property transactions. Representatives of the news media and designated staff shall be allowed to attain, attend the executive session. All other members of the audience are asked to leave the room. Repre representatives of the media uh, are specifically directed not to report on any of the deliberations during the executive session, except to state the general subject of the session as previously announced. That no decision may be made in executive session at the end of the executive session. We will ask you to return in open session. Welcome the audience back in. So thank you. Okay. The diehards are back. <laughs> 30 seconds of there. <laughs> that's all that's left. <laughs> oh, good, good. That. That's good. Okay. That's good to visit that. All right. I will now reopen the city council meeting and uh, I will ask for a motion. I move to authorize the city manager to negotiate the pur purchase of property for construction of a high level water reservoir at the location and within the limits discussed in the executive session. Okay, I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. I have a first and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, we are now in the, uh, well, that's that's about it, right? We're at the uh, adjournment. So we, <laughs> we love having you all here, obviously. We're glad you all hung out long enough to come back. Uh, Oh, uh, that comment time is over, but if you want to come to me after me. What?
So what's the vote since that's kind of over here? Over? Oh, as far as. Well, I don't think oh, sure. you, you, you go ahead. Yeah. Well, so um, the because it's we're negotiating a property purchase, um, it's confidential at this point, but it will be once we get that negotiated, we'll be able to talk more about it. And so the council just authorized me as city manager to negotiate for a, a purchase of a property to to do that. And they gave me limits to do that within. And so, so there'll be a limit. public hearing once it's time to discuss the purchase. Once we know that the, they're agreeable to the terms at that mm -hmm. point, there'll be a public hearing and members of the public can weigh in on whether they think that's a, a prudent location and price and all those things. Uh, we just, if we were to stay where it, there've been a couple of different places under consideration and we would lose our negotiating leverage if if we disclose what our price cap is and and where we're talking about. Does that answer your question enough for right now? Okay, great, thanks. All right, I will now adjourn the city council meeting.